second element within the competency of erect and dismantle formwork for slabs on the ground is actually your, your erecting formwork. Now, again, there's seven performance criteria. There is a fair bit in it, but I don't think I need to go in too deep here. First one is design of footing and or slab on the ground is identified from job drawings and specs, checked in accordance with legislations, regulations and codes of practice. So when you're looking at the design for the formwork for your, what you need to do, um, you as a concreter, as the concreter will end up, and formwork in person, will end up knowing all of the codes of practice written um, for different areas and different things. It'll just become inherent in your knowledge after time, after time. And so sometimes you might find that somebody who designs a slab or the, the drawing for an area hasn't taken into account everything. Some design architects are more about the design than the technical specifications. So you're the person who will know the technical, technical parts, you'll know the regulations that you need to abide by and regulations can change for different councils and different areas of the state. Um, there should be an overarching state but some areas might have more specific stuff. They might require stronger concrete because of the ground that they're on um, or because of the actual terrain of the ground. An area um, such as some areas of Penrith or Mount Druitt where it's all nice and flat, um, they can get away with just having slabs plonked straight on the ground. You come up to the mountains or Hornsby, uh, Northern Beach, that sort of stuff where it's a lot more mountainous and hilly. Slabs can't just generally be plopped on the ground. The building sites don't generally allow for that. So you'll have different requirements for footings which you might be forming up instead because this is footings and slabs. Okay. Second one, your formwork will be set out to the requirements of drawing and specs. Okay. You've got the drawings, you know what the specifications are, you will set out your formwork to those specs. That's as simple as that one is. It's the, 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 it's the a case of you, you don't just go up and go, ah oh, yeah that's good enough. You know what the requirements are, you will set them up to those specs. Okay, if it says that you need to have four pegs in a two meter distance in the spec, then you make sure you've got your four pegs there. Otherwise, the slab might bow out. And that might, the amount of pegs could vary depending on the thickness of the slab because the thicker the slab, the more volume of concrete, and that's going to be a lot more weight. If a cubic meter of water is around a thousand kilos, a cubic meter of concrete is going to be a lot heavier. Okay. A fixing and fasteners, fasteners are selected consistent with the construction requirements of the job. So after planning out and saying these are all the fixings that we need and for the job, you need to make sure you use the right ones when you're actually erecting your formwork. You got to make sure that, like it's outdoors, you'll probably make sure that you have um, galvanized screws or strong construction screws. You wouldn't use chipboard screws or you wouldn't use um, plasterboard screws. They don't have the tensile strength. Okay, And in some cases you might be doing a really larger formwork for a footing that requires a, a larger type of form that needs bolts and that sort of stuff. Okay, So you make sure you're using the right ones. And that brings us to the fourth one which is formwork shutters and or edge boxing are constructed and erected to requirements and specs. Okay, so for slabs on ground, most of the time it's just going to be a formwork box. So timber, round the edge, some stakes and that sort of stuff. If you're doing a formwork for a footing, which is a lot deeper, or you're doing a much larger um, formwork for um, concrete walls, that sort of stuff, that ends up being boxed in with things like form ply. And form ply needs to be held in in a much a much more secure way it needs to have a lot more foot framing around it different types of connections and it still needs to allow for the um, the reinforcement to go in and all the concrete so that a concrete doesn't make the um, plywood bow that part is known as shuttering okay on the ground basic formwork just formwork or boxing formwork is a very generic term for anything that will hold concrete in while it sets Shuttering is a more specific, and you'll see it more on um, 
larger industrial sites or bigger houses that have a lot more concrete involved or things that are on sides of slabs and um, hills and that sort of stuff. Some of the footing for this house here, because we're on a slope, would be would have been boxed in because there's giant concrete columns, not just a footing through the ground. Performance criteria five, formwork support is braced to job requirements and specs. You notice there's this to, to job requirements and specs, and what I'm reading off right now is that construction website that Mr. Hurst and I were setting up. I'm basically putting in the specific specifications for the course or for the elements in here. So you can go and have a look at that as well. It should be published probably before the video. Formwork support is braced to job requirements and specs. So that just basically means that you've put your formwork down, you have all the pegs, all the posts, all the bracing, any uh, you've got all those supports there. This is basically the practical part of this big one. Blockouts and casting services are installed to specified locations. Okay, blockouts and casting. Blockouts is where you, and you will do one in our formwork exercise. A blockout is an area where you need to make sure that no concrete goes there because a service basically needs to go through that space. Quite often it'll be where um, drainage needs to go out. And for your assessment, we're going to be blocking out using an internal form. So, just say here is our slab area, kind of say that, and we need to have a space where there is no concrete, then we basically got to make sure that we do have formwork here as well to stop the concrete falling in. Like I said, that's usually for drainage, um, but there are other instances where it might not be. If it's for drainage, usually they'll just put... Um, They'll put the plumbing pipes, the, the conduit, straight into the slab and they'll have all that in place before the slab gets poured and then they'll put caps over the top of the pipes, slab gets poured, cured, take them off, all the plumbing is in place. Sometimes they'll use conduit so that electrical sort of services can go through and that sort of stuff. But that's all, if you used a piece of conduit that had to go down in here and come out the side of the slab, that's a block out as well. But for the purpose of the competency, you have to do a block out like this so that you're actually getting it set and you're putting your pegs in to hold it in place. Okay, because so you need to make sure that that stays still and doesn't float up on your concrete. In some cases, there are things where um, a small laundry area or something like that, that part of the slab will be lower than the rest of the slab. And so if this was a whole slab, you might have your boxing out going here, which is also kind of like a step down. So the concrete comes to here to a certain depth and here it goes down a little bit lower because this is holding it from going in there. That's concrete is while it's liquidy, it won't it shouldn't slump under there for you. So there's a couple of different ver methods and there's professional versions of these sort of things that you can buy that are predetermined sizes for everything or you can just basically make them with your formwork as well. Number seven, release agents are applied to formwork face where specified to the manufacturer specs. A release agent is basically an oil or a detergent type thing that gets put onto your formwork so that when the concrete sets it doesn't stick to your formwork so you can take it off without destroying the side of the slab. Form ply has an incredibly smooth laminate type surface on the outside edge or on the edge that's going to be up against the cement or the concrete. That doesn't need a release agent because it'll just peel off. But things, if you're using hardwood or treated pine or that sort of thing for doing a small um, slab, you might want to have some form of release agent on the outside. Like I said, could be a detergent, could be a, an oily type stuff, could be that all your formwork is painted. That'll stop the concrete sort of soaking into the timber and making it stick. There are commercially made release agents that you can purchase, and then it says there to the manufacturer specs, they may mean that you need to mix it to a certain um, 
ratio to water so that you can paint all of your formwork so that when you pull the concrete it won't stick to your formwork and you can peel your formwork away safely. I have seen instances of formwork that's been pulled off and it's either not been done properly or it has been pulled off too soon and you'll see the side of the slab crack off. And that was on a house in Ropes Crossing. That's element two. All right, I'll turn this off. I'll get ready for element three. 